Hey guys, welcome to another edition of True Reflection. I know it's been a minute, it's been a while. Um, realistically or ideally, it would make more sense if I recorded these podcasts more on a regular basis. But I'm a person I feel like I don't want to be talking about random stuff, even though my topics are pretty random. But anything that I decide to talk about, I want it to have meaning. I want it to have substance. I want it to be something that is relatable to everyone. Or, you know, maybe for someone to get something out of what I've said. Maybe something to trigger you to think about, you know, different aspects of your life. Or, you know, come to a conclusion on your own. You know, and sometimes the only way that a person can, you know, effectively look at the circumstances surrounding themselves is by hearing another person's story, another person that has gone through what they are going through or that has been thinking or is feeling or has felt the things that they are now feeling. And, you know, sometimes when you are in your own head, dealing with your own thoughts and dealing with your own emotions and not having someone that you can trust to talk about these things too, because you feel like nobody understands or nobody is going to understand what you are saying or what you are feeling or what you are thinking. And then there is a place of the fear of being judged based on the things that you are feeling because of, you know, maybe certain decisions that you that you made depending on the circumstances or the situations that you were facing at the time so that fear of judgment that fear of being misunderstood a lot of times it what keeps people from actually speaking out or sharing their inner turmoils with another person because especially in this day and age it is so hard It is so very hard finding someone that you can trust, someone that you can speak to, someone that can relate to your hurt, to your pain, to your joys, to your successes. And um, the sole purpose of me wanting to do this podcast is so that I can share, you know, my personal aspects based on my personal experiences. Also from what I have observed because I am a person that I not only learn from my mistakes but I also learn from the mistakes of others so anything that I share in this podcast um, it is relatable to me or it is based on an observation that I have made based on the people around me or based on the circumstances that I have been faced with and after I have reflect on it and I've come to an understanding or an, a conclusion and I feel like, hey, you know what? Maybe another person can benefit from what I have come to term with or what I have come to understand. Mind you, I am not a psychologist, I am not a therapist, I am not a professional in any of those aspects, but you know, sometimes, sometimes when you can reflect on things and you listen to your inner voice after you've prayed about it and you listen to your inner self, sometimes, you know, the answer is clear. Sometimes the answer that we seek is within ourselves. It only takes a moment of self-reflection for us to actually accept what we have already known. But for some reason, we were 
in we were unable or we didn't want to accept the truth for what it really is until it's there staring us in the face to the point where it's unavoidable so with that being said um i just basically just wanted to touch very lightly on the importance of knowing when to let go and letting go of something letting go of someone at times can be the most difficult decision that you can make because now you're looking at the times invested you're looking at the energy that you have put into whatever the situation is and you're and you're thinking maybe if i hold on a little longer things are going to change you know maybe if i do this differently things are going to change but sometimes holding on to something can actually do so much more damage to you as a person than letting go you know letting go is is hard it's it's painful at times but holding on to something especially something that is not there something that is not tangible something that there is no future in it can be more damaging to you than the act of letting go itself <laughs> and the another thing is you have to look at the people around you you have to look at the people around you you have to look at the people that you associate yourself with and you have to evaluate each person and you have to determine what is the motive of these people for having you in their life what what actually is their true motives is it because that these people genuinely care about you and your well-being or is it because you are convenient to them at that point because you supply a need to them at that point not to say that they don't care about you on some levels but realistically you are just meeting a need for them at that particular point with no real emotions behind it you are not really beneficial to them long term and the thing is that they know that you are not beneficial to them long time for a, um, um in regards to being um long term they know within themselves that at that moment in time you are just uh what what is the appropriate word or phrase that i can use oh my god it's like it's so it's so hard i just hit a brick wall trying to figure out um the exact phrase that i would want to use that wouldn't make it make sense but you have to recognize the people that are using you for their own selfish purposes you have to be able to recognize people that genuinely care about you in a sense where they want nothing but the best for you and they would you know do whatever they can in any aspect in any area to help you and to help you succeed because they they care about you so much that you know they just want to help in any way possible and for those of you that are in relationships with anyone this especially goes to 
um, any female that is in a relationship with a guy, you have to be able to recognize when that man cares about you. And at the end of the day, it's like, how can someone say they care about you when they are basically watching you struggle? You have to ask yourself, ladies, um, does he really care about me? And, and the thing is, it's not, it's not to say that, it's not to say that you, you got into this relationship with this person because you needed some kind of help. I mean, realistically, let's be real. We all need some help in, in some way, shape or form, right? That's just being real. That's just human nature. Be it male or be it female, we all need help in one way or the other, in some way, shape or form, where they be mentally, physically, emotionally, materialistically, we all need help. But at the same token, if you are an independent female, if you are an independent female, and the thing is, at the end of the day, there's this Bohemian song, there's this Bohemian song um, back home, and it says, no matter how independent you are, ladies, you still need a man. I will say it again. No matter how independent you are, or rather how independent you think you are, you still need a man. So even if you are an independent female, and you and you are in a relationship with a man your person that you are in a relationship with should want to help you at a point in in that relationship if they see that you are struggling in a in a sense you being independent you may not want to ask for help because you're not used to asking for help. Or maybe you're like me. Maybe when you do ask for help, nobody is available to help you. <laughs> I'm laughing at it, but it's actually sad. Like when I think about it, it is actually sad. And the thing is people don't understand. Like that is the reason why for me, I don't, necessarily ask anybody for help and it's not to say that I'm prideful or anything but again like I say if you are like me if you have been if you have been in positions all your life like like I have been to the point where where I have swallowed my pride and I have and I have asked literally asked people for a helping hand regardless of what the situation may be and there is nobody there to help me there is always some form of excuse as to why they are unable to help me or even if they say hey you know what um yeah i'm gonna help you or whatever the case is just let me know when you're ready i'll be there and then when you are ready for them to assist you they're nowhere to be found. You're calling, you're texting, and you're not getting a, re- a response or reply back until days later. And mind you, and mind you, um, I'm not faulting. I'm not faulting people because sometimes in the instance where when you need the help is when they are, they are not in a position to help you, and I mm-hmm. understand that. But you know that can do something to you to say, Hey, you know what? I'm just going to deal with shit on my own. And I'm not going to ask anybody for help because anytime that I do need help, nobody is ever there to help me. And that has been my personal experience straight across the board. I have never known to ask anybody for any form of assistance and for that person to actually come through for me to say, Hey, I have at least one person that I can call on to say, you know, that I can depend on a a reliable person that I can depend on if I needed some help. 
but let's step away from me for a minute and let's get back to what I originally started to say. You have to be able to ask for help, ladies. And if you are, like I, like I started to say, if you are an independent female and you have a problem asking for help, the person that you are with, the person that you are dealing with, uh, the person that you are in a relationship with, should know you well enough to know when you need help. They should know you well enough to say, hey, you know what? She's not going to ask me for help. Let me just offer my assistance. And let me just say this. I am a firm believer that a girlfriend is not obligated to her boyfriend. In the very same instant that a boyfriend is not obligated to his girlfriend. I am a firm believer in that. But there is a but. If the person that you are dating or the person that you are in a situation with, if that person genuinely cares about you, If that person genuinely wants the best for you, they will offer their assistance to you without you even having to ask. And that is the qualities that makes a good man. That is one of the qualities, I should say, because there are many aspects to being a good man. And fellas, I know you're going to say, well, um, I can't read minds. How am I supposed to know she needs help? If you don't ask for help, how am I supposed to say I am not a mind reader? Granted, guys, yes, I agree. Gentlemen, you are not mind readers. I will give you that, yes. Sometimes we females need to know how to open our mouths and actually say what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we want, and what we need from you guys. But in the same token, whilst I may understand that, we have to we have to know the people that we are with. And this goes for male and females alike. We have to be so connected to the person that we are in a relationship with or the people that we are close to that we can actually hear what is being said without it actually being said, especially if you are dealing with, with an independent person. If you are dealing with a person that doesn't know how to ask for help and you know this, but yet you care about this person, you then have to offer your assistance to them. And you know, sometimes, you know, There are people that are not accustomed to people lending a helping hand because they they have never gotten it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, have you guys ever been in a relationship with with a person? And this goes straight across the board. This is like, you know, male and female alike. Have you ever been in a relationship with a person and the little the little things that you do for them hold so much weight because you are the first person to have ever done it you know and so they don't know how to they don't know how to behave they don't know how to act they don't know how to accept the help because the kind of life that they've had they're so used to people having ulterior motives that when someone offer their assistance is because they always want something in return so when they meet someone when they meet someone that that wants to 
help them genuinely without really expecting anything in return per se, they're doubtful. They're doubtful about the motive behind the gesture. You know, that is, that is a broken person. That is a damaged person. And if you can recognize that that person has been hurt and that person has been damaged in a sense to the point where um, they don't know how to ask for help or they don't know how to receive the help, they don't know how to just be thankful and grateful, accept their help for what it is, and move on from it, then it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And I can honestly say (laughs) it's sad. It, it, It is very sad for me that I can honestly say that I am one of those people. I can honestly say that I am one of those people. I am one of those people that that have never had that have never really had anybody do anything for me out of the goodness or the kindness of their hearts like literally <laughs> I've never I've never experienced it I've never had it you know and even in my relationships, even in my relationships, because um, I am such an independent person. You know what? Let me be honest. I think I've had one person. I think I have. I I have had one person in my lifetime um, done that for me. One person. <laughs> but but for me, it is hard because. Someone always wants something in return. They always want something in return. Even when, even when they say to me, um, you know, if you if you need any help or whatever the case is, just you know, I'm I'm there for you. Just ask me or whatever the case is. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm doubtful. And then they and then they would reassure reassure you that you know it's okay. You know, whatever the case, I just want to help. And then so you take the chance of believing that this person just want to help and then when you do accept the help and then you know they turn and be like okay so um what are you going to give me in return like what (laughs) like seriously that has been my life like literally so I have become so accustomed I have I have become so accustomed to to doing things on my own. I have become so accustomed to not having any reliable or dependent person, dependable person that I can count on. Like Whitney Houston says, I've learned to depend on me. (laughs) I have learned to depend on myself straight across the board. I have learned to depend on myself for everything. And then at times, at times, it can get so overwhelming. It can get so overwhelming to the point where, at times, I break down. I break down, and I cry, and, you know, I get moody, or I get depressed, you know. And then a lot of times, people will be like, you know, um, what's wrong? Do you want to talk about it or is there any way that I can help or whatever the case is? And mind you, while it may be sincere when they when they are asking, but because I have been I have become so accustomed to to not having anybody in my corner. I mean, and the thing is, we, we've all done it at one point in time where people will ask you, like, you know, what's the matter? And you'd be like, hey, it's okay. Nothing's wrong. But deep down inside, like, you're dying, you know? And they would ask, and I'd be like, it's okay. I'd be like, it's okay. It's no, it's, it's no worries or whatever the case is. Because to me, it's like, what's the point? I'm going to sit down and, and, and tell you what I'm going through or tell you what the, what the situation is simply because you want to know 
but you're not offering no real solution to it. Like for real. <laughs> like I know I'm just I'm just right now I'm just raving and ranting and just talking about whatever. But that is that is that that is how it is sometimes. So it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, when you genuinely care about a person you offer their help you you pay attention to what they're saying even when they are not openly saying it because independent females have the tendency has the tendency to say things without actually saying things and if you are connected to your person if you if you are if you genuinely care about about that person you can hear it in their voice. You can hear it by the tone of their voice. You can hear it by the things that they don't say to you. And you automatically know, oh, okay, she needs some help. So let me just go ahead and help her. Or he needs some help. Let me go ahead and help him. Because sometimes it's not the female, it's not the female that is not accustomed to receiving help. There are situations where males where males feels like, um, I don't want to ask my wife or I don't want to ask my girlfriend for any type of help because you know what, it's going to make me seem like less of a man because I'm the one that's supposed to be providing. I'm the one that's supposed to be supporting her. I'm the one that's supposed to be the breadwinner. So, you know, sometimes when, when a guy is in, is in that place where they feel like, you know, something is lacking in their life, where, where they feel like, you know, they're not being the provider and the protector as they should. And then they have a female, then you, then they have a female that is willing to offer help, that is willing to offer, offer the assistance. And, you know, and, and the offer is on the table. You have men that, there are a lot of men that don't know how to accept their help from their female counterparts. But then, isn't the sole purpose of being in a relationship is so that we help each other out? Not taking anything away from the other person's independence. Not taking anything away from the other person's manhood. But isn't the sole purpose of a relationship is so that we can help each other through the struggles. Because it is my understanding that that as a female, when I'm in a relationship with a person and I genuinely care about that person, then their problems automatically becomes my problems. That's just me. If I am in a relationship with you and you are a good man, you are a good man that, that's been there for me in every aspect of the word. But men get tired too. Men get tired to the point where they just want to sit somewhere and think. They just want to sit somewhere and break down. And regroup. But guys, if you're in a relationship with a female and you know the kind of female that you are in a relationship with, she has shown you to be the kind of person that regardless of the situation, she is there for you. You should not have a problem breaking down in front of her. It doesn't make you less of a man to do so. You should not have a problem accepting the help from this person. And the same thing goes for the for the women. Well, of course, women, you know, we're going we're gonna to be us anyways. You know, but again, I say you have to know the person that you are with. You have to be so connected to the person that you are with to know the kind of person that you are dealing with, to know when your person needs help. You know, it's not just the women that don't know. It's not not it's not just the independent 
females that don't know how to ask or receive help from their male counterparts. It is also the males, and oftentimes it is the males, that do not know how to receive and accept their help from their female counterparts. And again, I say, girlfriends are not obligated to their boyfriends. They're not obligated to help. They're not obligated to cook. They're not obligated to clean. They're not obligated to do anything for their boyfriends. The same way that a boyfriend is not obligated to do anything for the girlfriend. They're not obligated to help with the rent. They're not obligated to pay with the cable bill. They're not obligated to help with the groceries. They're not obligated to you. It is my belief that a husband is obligated to his wife. And a wife is obligated to her husband. But again, I say, if you are dating somebody and you are in a relationship with this person, if you genuinely and sincerely care about this person and this person's well being, and you see that this person that you are with, is struggling, you would offer your help. You would offer your assistance to that person without them even having to ask. You know that, you know, the rent is coming up. You sometimes sleep over at this person's house. You know, you spend the majority of your time at this person's house. Or this person go out of the way to cook and clean for you. If you genuinely care about this person, if this person means more to you than just sex, and you know that her rent is coming up, because you care about this person, you are going to offer your assistance towards that rent. Even if it's just 50, even if it's just $50, you're going to be like, Hey, you know, your rent is coming up in a couple of weeks, right? Well, here, here, here's $50 towards the rent. You know, you would offer your help because you genuinely care about this person. This person means more to you than just sex. You know what I mean? And in the same instance, when the when it's the other way around, that person is going to be more inclined to do certain things for you. Like guys, right? Guys, oftentimes you guys would meet a female and you know, you'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to help her. Oh, she don't cook. She don't clean. She don't do this. She don't do that or whatever the case is. You know why that, you know why that is? Like, let's say you were dating a female for like, for like three to four or five months, you know, and (laughs) you have never once helped her in anything. Again, you're not obligated to do so, but you genuinely like this person. You genuinely care about this person, but the same way that you are seeing, you are trying to see if this female have wife qualities or wife tendencies is the very same way that we female are looking at you to see if you have husband qualities, if you have husband tendencies. So it now becomes to a point where both persons are testing the other person out to see what that person is going to do. So you're dating this person for like four or five months and you're waiting to see at one, at what point in time is this person going to offer to cook you a meal? You're waiting to see at what point in time is this person going to offer to say, Hey, you know what? Um, why don't, why don't I come over and, and do your laundry? You guys are waiting to see at what point in time a female is going to display these wife tendencies of these wife qualities. But yet we are waiting to see, are you, are you going to provide for us? Are you going to, are you going to protect us? Are you, you know, going to do things for us when we need it? 
at no point in time you're waiting to see if she's going to offer to to cook you a meal but at no point in time you say hey you know what um you, know, you you hear her said that you hear her say to you that you know what I need to go to the grocery store <laughs> you've heard her say that you know what um I, I need to go to the grocery store or sometimes like when she's at the grocery store you guys go grocery shopping together but yet you're not even offering to help her with the groceries you're not even helping, you're not even offering to say, hey, you know what, let me contribute 10, 15, 15 dollars towards the groceries. We look at we look at things like that. You know? Or sometimes, you know, you be like, hey, you know what, you want to come over? And then she drives over to your house, but then you don't reimburse her with the gas money. Again, we look you look at certain things to see if she is wife material and we look at certain things to see if your husband material so when two people are just using each other for sex then it's like it don't it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter then you, you then like you guys are going to be like oh you know what um she's not wife material because you know there's certain things she doesn't do and then she's looking at you like, you know what? He's not husband material because, you know, there are certain things that he doesn't do. But when both of you are offering your help to each other without the other person having to ask for it, it makes for a better relationship. Even though you are not obligated to this person, but it makes for a better relationship. Because when you're offering to help her with little things, when you're, when you're offering to help her with gas money, when you're offering to help her with, you know, paying for her groceries, when you're offering to help her for, you know, um, little things, she then turns around and double your efforts. You know, she goes, you know, out, out of her way to make sure that you have a meal. She goes out of her way to make sure that your clothes are are clean. When she goes out to the store and she sees something, she'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this up for her, for him because you know I think he might like that. When she goes shopping, she goes shopping not only for herself, but she goes shopping for you because she sees the kind of man that you are. She not only rewards you in the bedroom for your efforts. But she reward, but she rewards you for your efforts in every, in every area, in every aspect, without without you even having to ask her. You know, it's little things. It's it's little things. She, <laughs> you ever hear people say that you know um, black women are not submissive, or or black men seems to think that black women are not submissive. We are. We are submissive to the guy that is worthy of our submission. You know, when you see, I mean, we've all we've all heard the term when a woman is loved correctly, she becomes 10 times or 100 times more the woman that she was before not just in her appearance but in her attitude in her demeanor and the way that she treats you so whatever it is that you do for your girlfriend when you become when you become a protector and a provider to your girlfriend she becomes a nurturer to you <laughs> You know, but even though you are not obligated to this person, the feelings that you want, that you have for her, you are compelled to help her, even though she doesn't ask for your help and it's vice versa. So if you are in a relationship with a person and you are going above and beyond to do all of these things for this person and all this person is doing is watching you struggle you will talk and talk and talk and talk and pour your heart your heart out to this person and all the, and even though this person is lending a, is lending a, a, a shoulder to cry or a listening ear but this person is watching you struggle 
This person is literally watching you struggle. They're, they're listening to you talk about the many struggles that you are facing. And yet, they offer no form of help. They offer you no form of solution. They just sit there and listen to your heartache. You're, you're pouring your heart out about, about, you know, the many struggles that you are facing on a daily basis. You're talking about, you know, you're struggling to pay your rent. You're struggling to, to do this and you're struggling to put food on the table. You're struggling to get, you're struggling to simply get to the store to, to buy groceries. You're struggling to get to the, uh, uh, um, to the laundromat to wash your clothes. You're struggling to get to work from point A to point B, you know? They're listening to you talk about these things, about how tired you are, about how overwhelming you are, about you just wanting to give up. They're listening to you talk about these things. And yet, they offer no form of solution. Not one time did they say, hey, you know what? Um, I'll... I'll come and pick you up and I'll carry you to the stores to, to get what you need. At no point in time did they say, hey, you know what? You know, I'm off. I'm off on, on this day. Why don't I come and pick you up and I'll carry you to the wash house to wash your clothes? Or maybe you can come over. Maybe I'll come and pick you up and you know what? You can bring your clothes and you can wash your clothes over at my house. You know, at no point in time that they offer any form of solution to help lighten the load, to help take just a little bit of the burdens off your shoulder. Why are you still with this person? Why are you still dealing with this man? You know, they want you to come, they want you to come over to their house and and chill and spend time with them. But then you're saying, you know what? <laughs> I would come, but you know, my car is running low on gas. And he simply said, okay, I understand. Well, next time. Why are you still dealing with this person? At no point in time did he say, well, you know what, come on, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll reimburse you for your gas. I'll fill up your tank when you come over. I just come over because I want to see you. I want to spend some time with you. Just come on over and you know what, and you know, I'll, I'll fill up your tank for you. Rather than he says that, he simply says, okay, why are you still with him? Why are you still dealing with him? You know, or you don't even, you don't even have a car. Let's say you, you're not even driving, but then he invites you over and say, Hey, um, why don't you come on over or whatever and, and spend the night and you say, Hey, you know what? Um, I can't afford an Uber or a Lyft. One or two things, either he's going to volunteer to drive over to your house and pick you up. Or he's going to be like, you know what, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll send a Lyft or I send, I'll send an Uber to pick you up. He's inviting you over, but you must find your own way to get there. Why are you still dealing with him? What is the dick that good? No dick is that good. None. I don't care. I don't care if this dude have a dick made of gold. No dick is that good. None. You have to then know when to let go. Like, you may like this person, but you know, sometimes the sad reality is sometimes we tend to like people more than they like us. We tend to care more for certain people than they do about us. 
Because when you genuinely care about, about a person, again, I say, you willingly, it is a joy and a pleasure for you to do little things for that person because it's no big deal. That person is your baby. That person is your person. So it's like, it takes nothing. You will go out of your way to see this person. You will go out of your way, sacrifice things just just to put a smile on this person's face. But is this person doing the same for you? Is this person willing to put themselves on the line to see a smile on your face? Is this person willing to do whatever it takes or whatever they can at that moment to help you to make life a little bit more easier for you, to lighten the load, to take just a little bit of the burden off your shoulders just for a time, just for a moment. What is this person giving you in return besides some good ass pussy or some good ass dick? What is that person doing for you? What? Nothing. They're doing nothing except breaking you down emotionally and making you feel used. But you are allowing it to happen. At what time do you say, it's time for me to let go? Because it's clear and obvious that the way that you care for this person, that person doesn't care about you. Not on the same level. And it doesn't necessarily make them a bad person. It doesn't. It just simply means that they don't care for you as much as you do for them. And the minute, the moment that you realize this will be the turning point when you can start to let go. So I just wanted to say that I know I rambled on. I went off topic for a little bit, but you know, sometimes you have to share your personal experiences sometimes to get to put, to get the message across, you know, and when you start to realize certain things about yourself, when you start to realize certain things about the other person, when you start to realize certain things about the situation that you are in, it becomes that much clearer and it becomes that much easier for you to simply let go, no matter how hurtful or how painful it may be to do so at that time. So I just wanted to share this, to share that with you guys. I just wanted to, to say this, um, you know, so you guys have a blessed day. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy.